Hello and welcome to a special edition of an interview here with a star player here in the Canadian Premier League. Delighted to be joined by Cavalry FC goalkeeper and one of the best goalkeepers in our league, Marco Carducci, is here to tell his story. Marco, over to you to explain uh, your announcement today that you linked with the club through a statement. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I, uh, with that statement that, I'm, that I've put out, I now just wanted to be open about uh, an experience I had recently. Um, I was actually diagnosed with testicular cancer on February 16th. Um, thankfully for me, that whole process went by incredibly quickly. Uh, the day after the diagnosis, I had already received surgery uh, and was out of the hospital the day after. Um, it was certainly a shock. It was certainly something that I wasn't expecting, but um, was in incredible hands with the team, with the club, uh, our medical staff, uh, and everyone from top to bottom you know, to my teammates and everyone um, kind of supported me along the way. Uh, but yeah, it, it, uh, it was something that, that came up that has now left me out of training for a little while. Uh, but fortunately, um, I've already had the, the site set on, on returning to action and getting back in, uh, in with the team as soon as possible. And, and you know, gratefully, uh, we, we got on it quick enough that um, it looks like right now everything, I, I'm healthy, I'm doing well. And we caught it early that it was that it was contained, um, but it was certainly uh, something that I that I did not expect to happen, of course. And I think now being in this position, I, I want to take the role of an advocate and someone to share that awareness. Um, it's more common than people think, uh, and it's something that happens to young men. It happens to men in, in our age range. And I think when I look across the league, uh, everyone is around my age, you know, uh, in that in that category where it does happen. And I think. Uh, the value now in sharing the story and being open about it is uh, something that I'm, I, I really want to um, take part in and, and make sure that, I, that I'm open about the journey I've been through the last few weeks. Certainly appreciate that and your remarkable bravery as well. And it's, it's just amazing to hear that it's been contained, that you're feeling okay. Um, talk us through that initial part, not necessarily your own emotions. They're very private, but being a, a high-performance athlete, I know how diligent you are about getting the right information all the time. But how quickly was it that you needed to find out more about this and how did that help your mindset? Yeah, it was very, very uh, important for me to, to just deal with it as soon as, as soon as I knew something was up and, um, you know, a lot of people in, in my personal life and, and very close to me have really, you know, touted me for being brave and being open and being vulnerable. And, um, those are important traits that I think, uh, are difficult for men to, to appreciate, especially right. And to have, um, but for me, as soon as I knew something was up, as soon as I realized something was unusual, I brought it to our team doctor, um, who again, Dr. Robinson, uh, here, our, our physician at Cavalry was uh, fantastic, and he just laid the facts out right in front of me. As soon as we knew, we, we got some testing done, and, and that kind of indicated what was going on. Um, and then for me, it was a matter of just dealing with the problem. Um, you know, of course, it's scary uh, to be told that you have testicular cancer. Um, it, 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 just, it hits you like a train, right? You're certainly not, it was not what I was expecting, and um that process after was just about being like, okay, let's deal with this problem. Let's figure out what's going on. Again, I was, uh, I was in the best hands I possibly could be in. So I'm super, super grateful for that. But the message I would, I would just really want to emphasize is uh, get yourself checked, right? Do, do it yourself and, and be aware of what's going on. It's, it's important. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, I, I've said this a few times with people around me. I was really fit coming out of the off season. I was spending a bunch of time in the gym, focused, ready to go, feeling like I was on top of the world. It doesn't matter, right? These, these things can happen. And, and um, you know, again, just being aware and being open and vulnerable about those things when you need to be um, is key. I don't know if I, if I had put that off throughout the season and, and waited and waited and waited, you, you don't know what the outcome would have been. And so I'm really grateful again for that. But I just think, again, getting yourself checked and being aware and being okay with having those awkward conversations, but, you know, trusting someone like, like your doctor or whatever to, to kind of give you that guidance. Uh, it was certainly a real life lesson for me to, to, uh, to do that and how valuable that was. You talk about putting things off and again, you don't have to get into too much detail, but how quickly did it go to the fact that you, you, you hit this early Marco, how quickly did you notice something? And then immediately how did that help you with, with the process of this? It was massive, KJ. I think we, we will never, you know, you can't really know, obviously, what would have 
happened had time kind of gone on but um i got in really quickly uh and again you know i think maybe i have to give credit to my you know my my family doctor i've had since i was a kid who just said like keep an eye out and and be aware and uh, as soon as i noticed something it was probably within a couple weeks that i was like okay let's let's talk to the team doctor about it so you know all things start to finish it was probably like a four-week process for when i started to notice something didn't feel right to when I had gotten some things checked out, gotten some testing, and then eventually, you know, four weeks later, things did happen so quickly that before you knew it, I was I was being operated on and, and having this problem dealt with. Um, but it was massive. I, I don't. I obviously there's not an answer, but um, it, it's so important, right? It's like if something feels wrong, if something feels unusual, just get it checked out, right? If if you have the means to do it as soon as possible. Um, for me, it. Uh, yeah, we'll never know again for sure. But had I put it off longer and longer and just said, no, it's nothing. No, I'm fine. No, I want to keep playing. I don't want to be worried about my health in this way. I'm focused on my career. I'm focused on playing. Uh, it, it does, it does get as, as big as life and death. Right. So um, just going through that experience myself has reassured me in the value of being like, as soon as you notice something and whether it's, whether it's a man and, and, you know, we're talking about this or or anything for that matter um the value in, in getting it checked out early and, and being open about it again can be those those consequences can be huge and i'm just grateful again that uh, i went ahead and did that and had the people around me that were that were ready to help and talk about your team and how grateful you were obviously this is a unique situation to you whenever you you know presented i can imagine with the word cancer can be very scary, but I would imagine as soon as you were put on that path, you would be around people who dealt with this regularly, maybe daily. How important was it to, to lean on the support of those people in the medical field and how great, grateful were you for them pretty quickly? Uh, it Honestly, beyond words, KJ, it's, it's hard. Um, even now, I feel like things have happened so quickly. It's sometimes uh, that the emotions, and I'll, and I'll be open about it, the emotions have come and I've been more emotional than ever and okay with being that because it has been quite the journey um but it's hard to find the words to to show the appreciation i have for those people um you know first thing as you touched on the the people around me my family my friends my teammates coaches the staff here um have all been incredible um i talked about our team physician dr robinson who is the one to tell me news like that to say this is what we found is particular cancer and now we you know here are the next steps um he went above and beyond and um, you know, took it in, in his hands to make sure that I was immediately, you know, saw a urologist at the hospital, uh, again, within hours, uh, was, was checked in overnight. That It's not the case for most people um, that that would ever happen. So, you know, and then to be put in the hands of, of all the nurses in the hospital, uh, the urologist I saw, the, you know, the, the surgeon who did my operation, it's just, um, you're so grateful because at that point, you know, the world is spinning around me like a hundred miles an hour and, mm-hmm. and they're just there to, to, to take care of me. And um, yeah, I mean, I'll forever be grateful to every single person. I, I wish I could, I could list them all off, but um, again, it's, it's so, it's so special because I, I know they'll just say they were just doing their job. They're just doing what they would do every day. But when you're that person in that situation, again, I, I felt like I was the center of the universe and uh you know, there's not much else I can say other than than thank you from the bottom of my heart to those people. Very, very special, true heroes indeed. A football dressing room is a special place anyway, right? In battle, when you're working with your teammates and you're going out there, what was that like? Uh, what was that experience like telling those teammates? How did that go over? Uh, it was tough. It was very tough. Uh, like you said, you know, um, you know, we're in preseason. Everyone's gunning to be back and excited. And you know, I miss one day of training and you know, the reality is we're still, we're still working our way through the pandemic. So I think some of the guys were like, maybe he had a contact or or tested positive for COVID or, you know, something like that. But a day goes by and then, you know, in a professional environment, you're like, that's weird. Why why would he not be here for two straight days? And we're not really hearing much. So I know it was, uh, it was something a lot of the guys, uh, you know, they, they had reached out to me while I was in the hospital, for example, saying, Hey, hope you're well, just checking in. Um, Of course we kept it at that point private just because you know I, I needed the time to kind of get through it um eventually similar to this I, I got on a call while i was recovering at home and 
told the boys my story and, and what had gone on over those previous few days. And um, the amount of support I had was overwhelming. Um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a brotherhood, right? You look across the room and these are guys that you spend, you know, almost all day with and you travel around and you're rooming in hotels and you're fighting towards the same, the same cause. And it's a special group to be a part of. Um, and this group in particular at, at Cavalry, we, we have a special bond and uh, that was difficult again, to be, to be really, to be very vulnerable and, and to, uh, for, and for them to know what was going on. But again, the support was, was overwhelming and still is. So I'm grateful to them as well for that. Um, as we speak, Marco, obviously getting into preseason, a couple of weeks away from the start of the season. Um, how are you feeling now? What's the timeline? What are the doctors and the experts saying to you in terms of, uh, I'm sure, planting some dates and seeds in your mind because you know, every everybody needs motivation to get back to more something, I would imagine. Yeah, no, you know, okay, it's, it's unbelievable that this all happened again within the last month and uh, or just over a month now. And uh, the amazing thing is, again, thankfully we got on early everything looks contained there will be follow-up for me as, as with anyone who goes through something like this uh, and that will become a part of my life but I'm I'm ready to go I'm, I mean I'm, I'm just working every single day to get back um, you know recovering from the surgery is the is the key the key issue and making sure that we don't we don't push it too far until my body's ready to to do what I have to do to to be effective on the pitch um, but every single day is a bit of progression I've been, been able to to uh, get back on the pitch do some light stuff uh, which feels incredible right, to be around the guys, to be on the field. Um, and I'm hoping that right around the start of the season, I'll be, I'll be close to being back in full. I mean, it's hard to know for sure. It'll kind of be uh, one day at a time and see where we're at. But my goal is to be ready, you know, by the first or second week of the season. So uh, that feeling of you know, kind of going through all this and, and that uh, speed bump, if we want to call it that, uh, in my preseason plans, well, in the in the bigger picture, now the focus is on just getting back to it. And again, I'm in fantastic hands with my medical team here. Uh, that extends to the medical team who, who helped me at, at Rocky View Hospital, uh, where I received surgery and all that. So now it's just one step at a time, and I'm hoping that I'll be uh, I'll be throwing the jersey on quickly and getting back out on the pitch. And I'm sure we'll all be standing with a, a real ovation when that comes up for you as well. You're still young, my man, and you're heading into your prime as a goalkeeper. I know that. I could ask you right now about your own personal journey and how professional you've been brilliant with them and your own team and signing, but me, it doesn't matter right now. Let's not talk about that. Let's save that for another interview in Cavalry's quest to be champions in 2022 because I know that you guys are going to have a great team, but I'd rather save that. So last word would be uh, just back to you because I know many people will be watching this in the future. Uh, who are going to go through this. So I'd love to give you your last word in terms of being that kind of advocate for, for what people are going to go through, my man. Yeah. Um, just to, just to, to add to that, I, I think the ability to, to be an advocate now and to spread that awareness is something that I take very seriously. Um, and it's something that uh, I know I can have an impact with, with the role that I have. And that's going to become very important to me. That already has become very important to me. And uh, all I would say was, is just, be be open um it's okay to be vulnerable and and be honest as well um you know as i mentioned earlier in our conversation uh if you had asked me you know a month and a half ago before any of this had happened i would have told you i'm invincible uh, but unfortunately you know life comes with its challenges and this is something that certainly has humbled me and, and kind of given me that perspective so all i would say is um you know, to everyone, but of course, to, to the young men, um, whether again, between 15 and 35, this is the most common cancer uh, for men in that age range. And, and it happens more than, than you think. Uh, so get yourself checked, be aware, you know, be okay with having those awkward conversations and just saying, I noticed something feels wrong or it seems different. Um, and that applies, you know, anywhere, anywhere. Our, our health is is certainly the priority. And, and I think we have to be our own advocates for that too. And I think if, if anything that I can, that I can share from my experience is, you know, when you do notice something, if that ever is to happen, get it checked out, you know, talk to your peers, talk to people, go see a doctor. Um, it certainly can be more valuable than you'd think. And, and I've experienced that now. So um, I think that would be the message I'd want to send is just get yourself checked. If you feel anything ever feels unusual and um, be okay with talking about it, be open about it.
very well said. We thank you for talking about it and being open about it. I know you've got a lot on your mind and I've had a lot on your plate. So uh, thanks for finding the words, my man. We wish you nothing but love and health to get back on the pitch soon. And I know knowing you, you'll be there sooner than most people think as well. So again, Marco, thanks so much for this and, and uh, full health back to normal very soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Kajan.